This is what it's all about. Unnamed dive sites, a wall, a reef that somebody whispers could be pretty good. We all feel too often that people get stuck on diving the path that others have paved before them, which has put an abundance of famous dive sites on the map. But how do they get there? Who dove it first? And why did they name it that way? Someone had the adventurous spirit to dive where no human had laid claim before them. And we find that these exploratory dives can often reveal themselves as world-class sites. Well, we are here to tell you that Mervyn's Garden is exactly that, a truly breathtaking wall dive right on his back porch. And we are proud to help him explore it and name it. We hope to come back in a couple of years and see the growth of his son to be world-renowned Eco Dive Retreat. This is the story of a sailboat named Sylvia and the ragtag crew that call her home. Join us each week as we explore our planet, both above and below the surface, and find out what it's really like to live a life at sea. This is Expedition Drenched. every single night for maybe the last two or three weeks and it's a bit of a shame because everyone's been really enjoying to sleep outside we pull all the mattresses out every night and we all sleep out under the stars together and you wake up and you look around and you see just the most insane sunrises and you can hear all the sounds of the insects and the water and it's pretty unreal um, a very good way to start the day to wake up outside and you look around and you kind of have to pinch yourself sometimes when you realize where you are and Peanut loves it when we all sleep outside because she gets to just walk around from bed to bed and sniff everybody and cuddle everybody and yeah so she's having a pretty fun morning. So Marvin, who is the gentleman that we met in the little spot, I'm not going to call it a village because it's just him and his family that live there, but he had something really exciting happen, which is that he kind of is inheriting slash being given an island. It's very cool. So Marvin, what is this about? Oh, well, it's about an island. You see that island out there? Mm -hmm. uh, that island is called Palike in our language, but Palike means moon. Okay, interesting. Yeah? So. This, these two islands, Palike, um, Palike 1 and 2, uh, the one, they're just nearby to each other. And uh, the owner of the island gave me those two islands uh, since 1905. And do some people live on those islands? No, nobody lives on those islands. So it's your island, that's pretty yeah, cool. So they are my islands. <laughs> I own that island. No, no big deal. <laughs> just own a couple of islands. <laughs> and he has asked us to type up a contract and print it because they don't have easy access to printers here so that's what i'm doing now i'm just typing everything up and then he's going to come pick it up and then actually he is a pretty pretty switched on guy and he has some really big plans for this area here and in the lagoon and he wants us to go have a little look underwater at his soon to be his island and so he wants us to go kind of explore see what dive sites are over there and see if uh, you know what kind of stuff they have out there. So that's very cool. And I'm very excited to dive. You know, normally we're just kind of like diving for fun and for filming, but it's cool to feel like we have like a Important. more of a, yeah, like we're doing a job and we're helping someone too, which is cool. Surveying, we're doing, yeah. a, we're doing an underwater survey of Marvin's new reef. Yeah. So when you see Marvin's garden, you go dive that, because I'm gonna put yeah. it on the map. Yeah. Unless Mark my words. Mark my best words. Best new dive site in the Solomons. Gonna, yeah. Should we go scuba diving? 
Are you okay? Drifting away, breathing you out of my lungs. Up through the cosmos and out into space. You are my oxygen, but you're gone, gone, gone. This is the little gem we have been waiting for ever since we arrived to the Solomons. The countless hours searching through large pink Gorgonian fans, hoping and praying to finally spot a needle in a haystack, have finally paid off. Let us introduce you the pygmy seahorse. Incredibly, this adorable critter was only first discovered in 1969 by accident while researching a Gorgonian fan. It's no surprise these creatures have eluded humans for so long, as they only grow to the tiny size of 2 cm. And since then, eight different species have been discovered. Take a moment and imagine yourself in another life as this smallest of miracles, hanging onto your home by your tail that is being constantly battered by the swell, trying your best to go unnoticed as you snack on crustacean plankton and hiding from a roaming long-nosed hawkfish and lionfish who will make a quick snack out of you. And then one day, out of nowhere, you're visited by an alien spaceship controlled by a giant. Are they here to beam you up? Probe you? What a crazy existence it must be. Anywhere I go, I swear I can feel you. I've been talking to your ghost oh, You're the only one who knows oh, We were so close Almost, almost Drifting away, breathing you out of my lungs. Up through the cosmos and out into space. You are my oxygen, but you're gone, gone, gone. Marvin's here and he just showed up so we're gonna go in the dive dinghy and we're gonna head over to scope out his little islands and we brought our mask and fins so we might hop in for a little snorkel and kind of scope out where we think some of the good dive spots might be. I want to set up uh, houses there for people to uh, stay there. You see it got a higher higher land yeah. and yeah. this place here is for them to come and relax and play whatever yeah. and the white beach. Yeah, yeah. Over her, her so you live here yeah. and then you chill here. Yeah. That's a pretty good vacation. <laughs> that, that's, that's the idea for, for this one. Oh, look at this little entrance. How cool is this? <laughs> this is very cool. Right here?
Imagine waking up every morning to this, you know? I mean, we do too, but we were, oh. from over there. <laughs> but it's something special to be It like. doesn't special because it had your, your own eyes. Not like Sylvia, you have your own privacy here, okay? Yeah. You don't understand my point. <laughs> <laughs> It's a pretty magical place, huh? Like the first man, I was cut so clean by heaven's light. Just thinking that um, living on a boat, it makes you appreciate land more because you know we sail into the Solomons or the South Pacific because you want to see like this and it, I wouldn't say that you get completely used to it but you definitely it loses over time it loses some of the appreciation and the magic and then like coming here and we see saw these grass huts and I thought oh imagine to put your mattress under this hut and stay the night on your own island and it seemed like such a crazy exotic amazing <laughs> like strange concept but it, it's just so funny because when you're on land you think Imagine what it would be like to even a sailing boat. Be on a sailboat, anchored out here, and it's just it just everything makes you appreciate other things more. And I I think that I had to really stop and pinch myself and be like, holy oh, where we are right now. Like, Morova Lagoon is probably one of the most like just classically beautiful tropical paradises that we've ever seen. So I'm feeling very happy and very lucky and grateful to be here. If I knew more words, I would keep keep it up. Blog it out, 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 blog Shampoo. Okay. Your locks are looking extra lovely so today. We have to then improve them a bit. <laughs> yeah. Enough. And then for all hers. I don't know how to say it in English. <laughs> Into the play. <laughs> okay, show me yours now. <laughs> Show me your pantan. My panties. My pan. I don't show those. Pantan commercial. Nay, you're next, eh? Yeah. Are you bringing? Oh, oh, this one looks like peanut. Yeah. Not, I like this one. This is peanut. Oh my god, look. Oh. Peanut would eat it. That's what she yeah, eats. Yeah, it's too Oh, oh you're so cute. So three pineapple, Chloe is grabbing some rice and we'll grab a little bit of sugar in a can as well. This and then she's got, you want sugar or you want noodle? Sugar, don't noodle. Okay. Yes, yes. Um, Chew your bag back. What's that? Yes. They're so cute. Hello. Chloe. Yeah? Yeah. I like the fluke. got super windy and it looks like a little squall is coming and the rain is coming right at us. All the islands that you still see right in front of the boat are barely in view because we're just covered in cloud and rain so it looks very very cool. It looks like we're just in the middle of the King Kong jungle here. Ooh. can't make a flatbread without a back oh. massage from a baby pig. From now on I always want a back massage when I make flatbread. <laughs> <laughs> Heard that, Peanuts? Yeah. 
good. She's here. really enjoying Luca. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh. yeah. 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 Uh -huh. And she's very strong. Eh? She's yeah. She's really strong. She goes for the deep tissue massage every time, and she knows to get her snout like right in the where the shoulder blades are. She really like gets in there. She's a very talented. <laughs> she did. She hasn't even been to school. She's self-taught. She's like a massage see, prodigy, you know. Yeah, she's really, really good. That. Yeah. Some people are just born to be good massagers. Right, Tina? Pretty girl. Mm -hmm. At least I'm going to cause you to. Snake beans, you know. Yeah. <laughs> she accepts Visa, Mastercard, and snake beans <laughs> <laughs> for payment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Next time in the Expedition Trends, join us while we set sail towards one of the most spectacular dive sites I've ever been, the Vertical Wreck. How did it get there? Yeah. Yeah. Or did you get hit? Were you outside? Well, we saw it coming. Yeah. Oh, you okay? Oh. Uh, I think. <laughs>